Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our final conversation this morning is on youth leadership and, of course, uh, how prepared are young people for leadership positions across the country. Earlier on, we had, of course, tried to open up, you know, little details of this conversation, preparedness, the structures that are available, and, of course, you know, the stumbling blocks that still exist with letting young people get into positions of leadership. Should they be thinking about ASO Rock now, or maybe even starting uh, with leadership positions in the very you know, lowest levels? We've uh, joined, been joined this morning by a lawyer, Bolanli Ulubani, to join, of course, uh, the conversation and share his thoughts. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, so let's, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to start with asking about... The, the big one really would be as much as young people clamor for leadership and clamor for young representation in, in, uh, in uh, leadership positions across Nigeria, are they really ready for those positions? Oh, they're ready. They've been ready for maybe 20 years, 25 years. The young people, as we are referring to, you know, in terms of administration, leadership, can be classified as those between the ages of 18 to say 50 or 55 right now. Because those who are at the helm of affairs of this country are the age group of my father and my father's junior brother. And it's more or less like a gerontocracy. It's a certain group of people, privileged, advantaged, that have been at the helm of affairs of Nigeria since I've been in primary school, essentially, either as military mm -hmm. or democratic rulers. So we find ourselves in a situation where a particular class or age group of people have been more or less marginalized, and they are amounting, if we're not careful, to a wasted generation. They are well-trained, they are articulate, they are knowledgeable, they are experienced in terms of managing men and uh, material resources, but they have not been given the advantage because the constitution, the law of this country, the political arrangement is skewed against those who have ideas and those who want to contribute. If you are not sponsored by a political party in Nigeria, how do you aspire to positions? Exactly. In those political parties, there are godfathers who choose who gets what. There is no room for independent candidacy. So, how do you do it? I was just going to ask you that, yes. really. The cost of running for public offices in the country is outrageous. Yes. It serves as a barrier to entry in the first place. How can we begin to change that narrative? Well, the law, if we imbibe the spirit of the law, is a very, very good you know, uh, control device for all of the challenges that we're having. If you set a limit and enforce a limit on political uh, activity uh, expenditure, it goes to help. If you de-emphasize the issue of money politics to a point where to even obtain a nomination form is not in the millions and billions of naira you know, accruing to the party, you know, that makes it a level playing field for those who think they have ideas to be able to aspire. And their ideas will eventually sell them to the Nigerian people, and the Nigerian people will determine who their best bets are in terms of those uh, in the younger category who are offering themselves you know, up for service. Mm. Just, so, just a quick addition to that. You know, there was a fact check about the presidential nomination form for the APC. It rose from 27.5 million naira in 2014 to 45 uh, million naira in 2018. But the PDP nomination form reduced from 22 million naira to 12 million naira. But still, this is in the regions of millions. And imagine a young, energetic person who has all these big dreams for Nigeria. He doesn't have such money. Where does it start from, really? But moving on now, we know that you know, there are talks that for the youth, their own political advocacy, you know, youth activism, is on in the space of social media, that they're not ready to actually put foot and put roots down to make the change happen. Yes. Is this so? Well, I think that um, advocacy on social media, activism on social media, is one step away from reality. We should not think that those who do not have the means and the resources, who are good activists and good motivators on social media, will have the best chance to get there. I'm saying that we should be looking forward to those who are currently in governance at whatever level, local government, state or federal. And these are the ones we should be looking up to because 
to have gotten to those positions, they must be able to have a certain amount of resources. The governor of Niger State, present governor, is one. Yaya Bilo of Kogi State is relatively young. I think he's under 50 years old. And I think that people like that who have succeeded in business, who have managed men and materials, who have managed resources, and who are in governance now, and who are within the age bracket of between 18 to 50, 18 to 55, are the kind of people we should be looking forward to. Their orientation, their thinking, is more towards achieving what will be sustainable and which, what, that will be bene, what will be beneficial to those of the uh, age bracket that we're discussing. They know and feel the pains, and they can understand what it takes you know, to actually be able to solve some of these problems. Some of those who are proposing ideas right now have ideas that are suited for maybe 30 years ago. The current situation you know, you know, demands that someone make policies and programs that empower people, do enough training and orientation, empower them financially to set up you know, small-scale industries, skill acquisition, and eventually you know, processes that gear them towards being uh, employers of labor, being self-employed, and even making those industries successful with a view to exporting the goods that this category of youths who are very knowledgeable, who have ideas, you know, that, you know, can produce. So we need a younger group of people with fresh ideas. Let's also talk a little bit more on the Yabilo yeah, example you just uh, mentioned. Um, uh, there's people who, uh, of course, have mentioned that he is one of the young people in government uh, today. Um, do, do you, you know, would you say that he has, you know, lived up to, you know, example and, of course, is an inspiration for many other young Nigerians who want to get into those uh, positions? Of course, you know, uh, the new EFCC chairman, uh, Brother Rashid Bauer, is also someone who has been celebrated as yes. uh, being young. And Ambra State has one or two commissioners also who are young. But, uh, you know, let's, let's start from Yaya Bello. Yes, the, I'm going to go back a little bit in history. General Yakubu Gowon became head of state at 29 under controversial circumstances. Uh, Muritala Mohammed had become minister, head of state, and had been assassinated at the age of 36. And uh, our two-time president, military and uh, democratic, General Lucia Gwaba Sonjo, you know, was also in his 30s when he was head of state. So we have a template, but they took power by force of arms, military coup, and they were able to put themselves in the positions of advantage where achieving power democratically was not also very difficult for them. Now we have a group of people who, by virtue, as, you, as, you, as, as I've referenced the issue of Yaya Bello, Yaya Bello is advantageously positioned because one, he's in, within the age bracket of 18 to 50, 55. Secondly, the, the location of the state he governs is a meeting point between the north and the south. He's also cosmopolitan in approach. He's liberal, he's accommodating. He has even taken the example of Lagos State and appointed people who are Yoruba, people who are Igbo into his cabinet. In a predominantly uh, Muslim state, he's gone as far as having what you call religious tolerance. He's, for the first time, in the history of the state, you know, built a chapel in the government house. Youth unemployment in, a, in, in Nigeria, by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, has, you know, that is, unemployment generally is about 33%. The larger percentage of that is the youth of this country. In that state, Yaya Bello has done a lot for orientation, skill, skill acquisition, providing capital, for entrepreneurship and establishment of small-scale industries and has reduced to a very large extent youth unemployment in the state. And in addition to that, Eya Bello strikes me as somebody who is not thinking within the box. He appears radical. He appears to be somebody who goes against the grain. You know, sometimes we need to do things a little bit crazily so that we can get onto the right path. We need to do some things that are radical and unexpected to move Nigeria in the right direction. I think all of these boxes, Yaya Bello actually ticks it mm. and may be a breath of fresh air to what we are currently experiencing in oh. Nigeria. So I think he's a shining beacon for a particular generation. And I think that if he's given the opportunity, he will, I think, do a better job than most of those who are presently at the helm of affairs. Oh. 
and who seem to be bereft of ideas. At, at, at least, you know, he, he should, you know, serve as inspiration. Since we're talking young people in leadership, he should serve as inspiration to more uh, people in there, like you've said, 18 to 50, even if 50 is, you know, is a reach, but yes. um, 18 to, you know, that um, age bracket age to, bracket. you know, take their chances and uh, attempt to get in, the, in that place. We have uh, uh, the youth numbers that should be able to change any election, to swing um, any election, you know, in anyone's favor. But hopefully we also reduce and remove the barriers, you know, that are stopping young people from participating and also increase the interest of young Nigerians in participating in the electoral process and the voting process and all of that. Yeah. Uh, we're out of time. Yes, um, yes, we're, we're out of time. Money. So thank you very much. Looking forward to a change of the, the button uh, s soon enough, you know, from the how people will say we'll be having recycled politicians to young people with fresh ideas and vigor. Mr. Bolanli Ulubani, uh, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you for having me. Right. Thank you. And that's where we would say goodbye this morning. And of course, the last edition of The Breakfast for this week, uh, 19th of March. Uh, we're we're going to be back here again next week. It's a goodbye from me. And of course, remember to catch up on any of the details, any other parts of this uh, conversation that you may have missed on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and same thing with our YouTube channel. I don't want to go, but sadly, <laughs> it's the weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>